जय जगन्नाह जय जगन्नाह जय जगन्नाह जय जगन्नाथ जय जय जगन्नाह जय जगन्नाह जय जगन्नाह जय जगन्नाथ जय धन जय बल देव जय सुभद्रा जय बल दे 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 जगन्नाथ स्वामी नयान भक्त गामी नयान भक्त गामी भगवत में जय जगन्नाथ जय जगन्नाथ जय बलदेव जय सुभद्रा जय जय बलदेव जय जगन्नाथ जय जगन्नाथ जय बलदेव जय सुभद्रा जय जगन्नाथ जय जगन्नाथ जय बल देव जय सुभद्रा थाय घोर हरि भो हरि भो हरि भो घोर हरि भो जय जय प्रभु फा प्रभु फार हे प्रभु फान जय प्रभु फान प्रभु फान जय जय प्रभु और फिर मनुंदे शिल प्रभु फान की जय ओम नील चाल निवे सया नित्य परमात्म ने बलभद्र सुभद्रम ब्या जगन्नाथाय थे न मह सो ई वर्षिप जगन्नाथ बलदेव सुभद्र महारानी सुप्रीम पर्सनैलिटी ऑफ गॉड हेड हू मैनिफेस्ट दम सेल्स इन द मूड ऑफ सेपरेशन फ्रॉम देयर लविंग द बोडीज एंड टू गिव प्लेजर टू द लिविंग एंटिटीज इन जनरल दे अपीयर इन पब्लिक जस्ट टू गिव देयर दर्शन सो एवरीवन कैन बेनिफिट सिंपली बाय seeing them and so in 2001 we were in jagannath puri for jagannath rath yatra which comes up i'm not sure of the date this year somewhere in the beginning of july i think right july 11th okay um in order for the program to go on for the rath yatra are many preliminary activities and of course two weeks before it's always exactly two weeks before the atharatra date there is the sans what is called snan yatra or the bathing of the lord 
with various substances, especially yogurt and milk, like that, very nice. We've done that program throughout the world in many of our temples. It's always a fun program, always a wonderful opportunity to worship the Lord in His beautiful form. But it goes back to a very deep and very intimate pastime of the Lord, is that the uh, it's called Anavatsara. <laughs> Anavatsara is a two week period prior to the Lord's Wrath program, Wrath Yatra, where the Lord performs a particular pastime. Uh, we always make the same mistake every year. We bathe the Lord and we forget to close the window, and He gets a draft, He gets cold gets a chill, gets sick, and he has to go in hiding for two weeks. It's not, he's not on lockdown, but it's, <laughs> he doesn't have COVID, but he still, he has, a <laughs> he's got a, a fever, and he's not feeling good. And, uh, and this is not some uh, imagination. It's actually a, a reality. The Lord undergoes this particular pastime for the pleasure of his devotees and for his own transcendental pleasure. In the year 2000, we went to the uh, Jagannath Rathiyatra. We were also there during the Anavatsara, where the Lord was in his mood of accepting medical treatment by his devotees, by uh, giving him extra rest, changing his darshan times, and performing various pujas and giving him medicinal herbs, teas, and massages. Mm -hmm. So this goes on. So we had uh, one doctor who came with us. And he was a medical doctor. His name was Sita Ram Das. <laughs> and he got the name because he is a devotee of Sita Ram <laughs> from South India. And he also joined us on, the, on this yatra to come. We were about... Um, let me see, about 2,000 devotees that came. And um, they had special darshan during this Anavatsara when Jagannath was sick. And then people could come, and it was very, it was a late darshan. You'd go there about 12 o'clock midnight for this darshan. And um, uh, of course, anyone with a Western body could not go. And even those, some um, those with certain characteristics or backgrounds in Indian culture could not go. Only those who are of certain Hindu nationalities, characteristics. So Sita Ram, he had never been exposed to Jagannath worship before, and he had never been to Jagannath Puri, obviously. So he decided to go to the temple that night to take darshan of Jagannath. So he went for this very special private darshan that comes in the late evening, around midnight, and he was there. And some of the pandas were there, and he was looking at Jagannath, and they sort of connected with each other. And then he told them that you know he was a doctor. Oh, and they became really uh, enlivened to hear that. They said, "Oh, you're a doctor. Well, Jagannath's got to go. Got a fever. Go check his fever." see what's, how high it is. So he's thinking, well, that's, you know, that's a nice idea, you know. Jagannath's got a fever. So he went over to the deity and they said, place your hand on Jagannath. So he placed his hand on Jagannath's arm. And he say, said, no, no, place your hand on his chest. So he placed his hand on Jagannath's chest and he had to move it away real fast because it was so hot. It, it was actually burning his hand. And so he was shocked. And they said, yeah, yeah he has a fever. <laughs> so, I mean, the deity was not just, you know, making believe. The deity actually had a high temperature. <laughs> and so when he came out, he told us the story. And uh, he said, I thought Sita Ram is very merciful, but I see Jagannath is even more merciful. <laughs> So this was a nice, nice pastime. Uh, and many, of course, many other devotees had the opportunity. So this Nanyatra is very special. 
it always precedes uh, Rathi Yatra by two weeks. And this is one of the Lord's very favorite leelas. And Rathi Yatra actually means the Lord returns to Sri Vrindavan Dham after being away in Dwarka for many, many years from his loving devotees, mm -hmm. the Brijabhasis. They're always eager and anxious for him to return and always absorbed in meditating on his lotus feet within their hearts and praying that they can again serve him in some way. So the whole idea of Rathi Yantra is that the Lord now decides to return to Vrindavan. So that's a wonderful pastime. He gets on his Rath cart and travels from one side of Grand Road in Jagannath Puri to the other side of Grand Road, Long Road. It's 2.3 kilometers long. And um, in that, uh, on, the, on the very end of Jag on, uh, Grand Road, there is a temple called Gundicha Temple which is known as Gupta Vrindavan, or Hidden Vrindavan. So the Lord travels from Dwarka, which is his temple, and to uh, Vrindavan, which is the Gundicha temple there. And then when he arrives, there's a big festival, and then he's taken inside, and he stays there for a week. And then that week, he's again associating with his devotees in loving pastimes in Vrindavan. Dham. After a week, there's what is called the Return Ratha Yatra, where the Lord gets back onto his chariot and returns back to his place. And in between there, there's a wonderful pastime called Here Panchami, where the um, uh, Lord Chaitanya and his devotees pl play acted this particular pastime. Uh, the goddess of fortune, Lakshmi, she becomes mad, angry at her husband for leaving and going to Vrindavan. So she wants to punish him, so she takes her associates, who are the other Lakshmis, to come and uh, drag Jagannath back to... But in the meantime, Jagannath has his assistants to guard him. So when he, they try to guard him, these Lakshmis, these women, they start beating up the men. It's really good for it's women's liberation. Those of you who are ladies, you'd like this pastime. But you're not paying attention to the pastime, so you're missing you're missing what I'm saying. So anyway, <laughs> but the ladies they beat up the men, and it's really a lot of fun. <laughs> so that's called hair hera panchami, and panchami means five days after. Five days. and uh, so that for that pastime is performed. There's many other worship ceremonies in between the rathiyatra going and coming. And it's an amazing festival. Mm -hmm. If you haven't gone to Jagannath Puri during Ratha Yatra, then you, you, you need to do that because it's one of the most powerful spiritual experiences you'll ever have in your whole life. It's so powerful, you get swept up into that spiritual energy, which is so strong. So we were there, and uh, with many senior, uh, other senior devotees, just to take part in the Ratha Yatra, which is chanting and dancing in front of Jagannath's cart, and, and then pulling the cart along the grand road. And Jagannath stops every once in a while to see the devotees chant and dance and chant. When he stops, they, the pujaris run up with all kinds of offerings and pujas, and they do worship, and this goes on. Uh, the carts are so big that there's a hundred men on each cart along with the deities. <laughs> and there's plenty of room. Uh, the, the carts are... Uh, Jagannath's cart weighs 60 tons. A ton is 2,000 pounds. So that's a lot of weight. Jagannath's cart weighs... Six, uh, no, no, Baladev's cart weighs 60 tons. I'm sorry. Jagannath's cart weighs 40 tons, and Subhadra's cart weighs 35 tons. And, that, and, and that's all made from a certain type of tree. There's only one kind of tree they can use for the, uh, for the uh, making of the cart, and it's found only in one place. And sometimes they run out of trees and they have to really look around because there's only one kind of tree that can be used. And if you arrive early during the Anavatsara, you can see them building the carts. It takes them about a month or more to build. They're probably building the carts right now. 
and uh, it's so wonderful just to watch him because there's no there's no metal fit fittings on the par cart. Everything is placed together by uh, by geometrical design, <laughs> and so that means everything is fitted into place rather than locked into place by screws and bolts like that. Of course, then you have the axles. Those are there. Those are separate, but the carts itself are all fitted together nicely. And then the, the different families that live in Jagannath Puri, they're traditionally engaged in painting the cart. And there's all co beautiful designs on the cart, and the, there's different colors. So you'll have a red color, yellow color, blue color, green color, and white color. And then you'll see they paint the carts, and then they put the different colors with the different designs. And each family has a particular color. So no, it's not like one person does all the colors or, or one family. One color, one family will come and put all the red color on, and another family will come and put all the blue color. And they know exactly where to put it, because they do it every year, like that is a tradition. And the car is only used once. And so after the one Ratha Yatra, it's no longer used anymore. And that, that's not that they keep it for next year. But they use the wood for the Ratha, from the Ratha Yatra cart for, for, for cooking for Jagannath for the whole year. So that they descend, disassemble the carts and then that becomes the uh, cooking. And then the next year they rebuild the carts from, from the bottom up again. It's really an amazing pastime. Uh, we were there 2001, 2006 and again in 2014. Uh, each time was a wonderful experience. In 2001 was especially wonderful. That was our for my first time to go there, and we were there with many senior devotees, and we stayed. <laughs> and that year was very special for some reason. Um, during the Ratha Yatra activities, when it begins on that day, there is an announcer who announces in Orion, and in the local language, Orion, what is going on. And he's also speaking, and that, that, that's broadcast in about, I don't know how many languages around the world, and so people can tune into the broadcast and get uh, different, uh, you know, they can hear about the Brathiyatra. And not all the, the interpretations, they say Jagannath is for everybody, you know, for, uh, for the Vaishnavas, He's also for the Shaktas, he's also for the Shivites, and <laughs> because all these different, you know, spiritual groups, they also come. And so they give different interpretations according to the different groups, <laughs> like that. So one time we w there is a thing called the cordon. Cordon is the circle around the carts when the Lord is being taken onto the cart from, his, from the temple. And there's a beautiful ceremony that starts somewhere around 8 or 9 in the morning. And then it lasts till about 2 in the afternoon. And so it takes about 6 hours for the Lord to get on his cart. And then they bring the Lord out. And then there's, there's great festivities going on. There's 100 people playing drums. There's 100 people playing cartels. There's 100 people uh, playing uh, various instruments. And... People are doing all kinds of acrobats, and it's all like for entertaining Jagannath as he comes onto his cart. So once he's on his cart, then the, the king of Puri comes, and he worships the, the Lord on all three carts, and then many of the dignitaries from the local government, they come, so there's a big worship. So the, the ceremony usually starts between 1 and 2 o'clock in the afternoon, the actual cart, and that time it was really hot. I remember in 2001, uh, the temperature was, um, it was about 110 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's, if you take, f that must be about 45 degrees Celsius, something like that. Let me see, 5 into 45 is 9, 9 times, 9 times, oh no, let me see. Yeah, if you, if it's 45, and you divide by 5, you get 9, and you multiply, you get 9, 81, and then you add 31. 
32, so 91. Yeah, it's a little, it's about 43 degrees. So it's hot. <laughs> right now we're about 33 out there and we're thinking, oh. <laughs> this is like to add 10 more degrees onto it. And so when Jagannath gets onto the cart, you have to, in order to get into a, the close area, the cordon, you have to have a special pass that's issued by the government. Otherwise, you can't get in. So we had some connections and we had some cordon passes and we got in. We were right next to the carts as the Didi was getting up on the cart. So there's a long, like, plank made out of wood uh, with, with different pieces of wood going down like steps in between. And then the, the, they put that, because the carts are high, they're really high. The bottom of the cart maybe is, might be as, almost as high as the, the, this arch here on the symbol, on the ceiling, a little bit lower maybe. That's just the bottom of the cart and then the deity is way up there. And, um, so then, you know, first Baladev comes out and gets on his cart, and then Jagannath, and then uh, Subhadra comes, ceremonies are going on, then Jagannath comes out. No, before Jagannath, Shudarshan comes out, and his weapon, and he has his weapon that comes out, and that's carried out, and then Jagannath comes. So when Jagannath was trying to get on, get on the cart, they usually take about between 20 and 25 really strong men, these guys are big. And their service, they're called Daitas. Every year they have that service of taking Jagannath out of the temple and bringing him on the cart. So these guys are carrying him with ropes so they can lift him up when he goes up the plank. So we were there. We were watching. I was standing right next to the cart. And uh, I was there with Radhanath Maharaj. And both of us were sitting on somebody's shoulders so we could see clearly <laughs> we were up high. And because there's even, as easy, there's even a crowd inside the immediate area. So, And the rest of the crowd is all around. And then the, the cordon is blocked off by the uh, police. They have two kinds of police. One's in the uh, gray khaki color and the other ones are in blue khaki color. And the blue are the special police they, that they used for this particular festival. And so they keep the crowd away. Sometimes it's not easy, though. <laughs> so we're, we're watching, and Jagannath is being carried off his, you know, now up to the, he's trying to get up on the cart. So these men are pulling him and struggling, and, and they can't get him up. He's he does not move, and Jagannath doesn't want to go up. So now all this is being announced on the, you know, on the loudspeakers. You can hear it because we couldn't understand it. It's an Orion, but people, you know, everybody's getting a little information of what's happening. So at one point and later on, we found out that the uh, the announcer said uh, he he started talking to Jagannath himself, seeing that the Didi wasn't getting up. He said, "Hey, Jagannath, Jagannath." You know, Jagannath at one point he was standing straight up and then he, w he laid down like he was, you know, like in a sleeping position. So the announcer said, hey, Jagannath, no time to sleep. Get up on your cart. Your devotees are waiting. Come on, come on. He was like encouraging. And then as soon as that happened, Jagannath, I, I, I saw it. I mean, it was right there. And Jagannath went straight up and right up the cart. It was like... We asked the men later, and they said, you know, we don't do anything. We just kind of direct it. He, he, he moves. <laughs> He's big. He's about uh, three meters wide, seven meters tall. Oh, Jagan. No, I'm sorry. Maybe that's a little too tall. Seven meters? No, he's not that big. <laughs> uh, he's about, no, he's about three meters tall. Yeah. And one meter wide. That's right. That's 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 close. That's actually right. Three meters tall, one meter. That's pretty big, though. Three meters. Yeah. Yeah, Jagannath's big. 
So, uh, yeah. And then you watch the, the whole ceremony. It's just so nice. And finally, uh, we were there with, um, in 2006, it was a little different. We had more. Bhakti Churu Maharaj was there. Indra Maharaj was there. Uh, Sachi Nandana Swami was there. Um, Pankajangri and Janani Vas were there. Madana Swami was there. And we, we all had, you know, <laughs> Indra Maharaj had a real big problem. He didn't have a cordon pass. So he wasn't allowed to get inside, but he kept sneaking in, and then the guards would catch him and throw him out again. And then he would sneak back in another side. And we had two of the pandas, and who were our friends, that kept sneaking us back in. They tried to keep, the, the, the army, these police, gets a, they get a little bit out of hand sometimes, and they just push everybody out. So every time they pushed out, and in 2006, we didn't have any passes. I just snuck in anyway. And, I was sneaking other people in too. And it was so hot. Oh my God. 2001 wasn't so hot, but 2006 was burning hot. It was so hot. There's a picture of me pouring a whole bottle of water over Indra Jumna Maharaj's head, head. I had a liter of water. I poured the whole thing over his head because he told me to. <laughs> and about, I don't know, a couple minutes later, he was completely dry again. <laughs> So yeah, he got beat up by the police a little bit, but <laughs> but he's he you know him he's he came he doesn't give up so <laughs> he came back in. That was a good was a an interesting, and then we did the Rathi Yatra, and then okay also Sri Prahlad was there, somebody, and at one point we stopped during the Rath, and we started to dance together in circles. And then I, I had heard about this word called blackout, where you actually lose consciousness. I heard about this, and I experienced it. <laughs> it was so hot that I saw this big black wave coming into my mind. I said, uh-oh. <laughs> and then I, I think I prayed, and then it went back out. But then it came back again. <laughs> it's just like this blackness It's coming into to put you into a state of unconsciousness. It was so hot, we were just, and we were trying to dance, and we were also dancing during the heat. And in order to dance, you know, because the crowds, when they see you dancing, they want to run in and, and grab you or and dance with you. So we had like one circle of devotees holding hands, and then on next, there's a second circle outside of them holding hands, and then there's a third circle. So we had three circles around us, so people couldn't get in, but still they were breaking through the circles. So we were trying to dance. And that was not, not really a wonderful, really, really wonderful Ratha Yatra. In 2001, when we were there, Jagannath only went halfway, because the rule is, that when the sun goes down, the wrath stops, no matter where it is. It starts at sunrise, it ends at sunset. Jagannath doesn't travel, only, he only travels when the sun rises and it sets. So wherever he stops, if it isn't a complete wrath yatra, then the next day they begin from where they left off, and in the evening, they keep, you know, worship going all through the night of Jagannath. And people come, take Darsh Darshan all through the night, like that. Uh, that day, that year was raining. And I remember devotees were sitting there t with umbrellas. <laughs> it was hot, but still it was raining. And, uh, yeah, so um, he didn't finish that year. I, mean, I remember we, he stopped about halfway. But that year, the, the people were announcing they were they were praising our group because we we brought about two thousand devotees with us, and the announcer was saying, "Wow, these devotees from Iskon, they are like Lord Chaitanya's devotees. They have come, and they are giving us Lord Jagannath." And he was just praising us so much. 
It was really nice. And he was saying, it looks like Lord Chaitanya has returned. Because, <laughs> you know, we were just following all the traditions and dancing and chanting so nicely. And then uh, during the Rath, we didn't see this, but we heard it later. Balaram decided to do his own thing, you know. You know he's, he's very independent. And he likes to, to have fun. So, um, the car is, there's a hundred people on the car, and there's many, many people pulling. And the ropes are like this. They're not like skinny ropes. They're like, you have to wrap both hands around it just to get your hands around the rope. Huge, big ropes. So people are pulling, 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 pulling. So at one point, you know, Balaram's cart goes first, Subhadra's cart second, and Jagannath is third. So there's three carts. So Balaram was going, but at one point he decided to change directions. So he started going over towards the side where there's, you know, the, the side where there's all shops and people. And he starts going this way. Now the police are supposed to conduct the pulling. So the police were saying, come on, pull this way, pull this way. Everyone was trying to pull Balaram back, but he wasn't going to go back. He, he was going on his own way, and they couldn't do it. And nobody gets off the cart, you know, they stay on the cart, it doesn't matter. <laughs> and there's, there's, no, um, there's no brakes on the cart. <laughs> there's only, there's steering, but there's no brakes. <laughs> And, you know, once you get the cart rolling, it's not easy to stop it either. So Balaram is push, going over to the side, and he goes right up against an, a big electrical pole and stops. And you can't push that thing back. So what do you do? So they called the municipal people, and they came out with their uh, tools and everything, and some man climbed up the pole, and they... They unfastened the electrical wires, really. And somebody was digging the pole out of the ground. So they took the whole pole out and so they can so jug it so Baladev's car could move again. <laughs> and so now Baladev he's he's leading the pack again and he's going. So he decides to do it again. <laughs> <laughs> this time towards the end of the Rathiyatra. And he's awfully going off to the side again. The police are trying to get everyone to pull the other way. It's not working. So then Jagannath, uh, Baladev, he goes right up against this man's shop. Because people come just for the Rathiyatra and they build their own little shops. And they bring some wood, they bring some cardboard, they bring some metal, and they make a little shop. <laughs> and then they sell things. So... Jagannath Baladev went right up against this man's shop and stopped. So what do you do? Take the shop down. <laughs> so the man who owned the shop, he was so happy. <laughs> he was thinking, Balaram chose my shop. Wow, he got I got blessings. So, you know, <laughs> so he was so happy. He didn't care about his shop. He got the blessings of Balaram. <laughs> Yeah, this is the mood of the bhakti. The bhakti mood is so strong there. So they took the shop down, and then Balaram came again, and they pulled him back to the middle. And then the cards stopped there, and then they stay there. This was uh, the second night, so they stay there, and then they don't go in. And the deities stay there overnight, and then they stay through the next day, and... That whole day, people come for darshans, and then you go. You can go up on a cart, and you can see the deity. You can be right next to the deity. Sometimes they push you right up to the deity, and they want you to grab the deity and hug the deity. So you do that. Then they ask you for a thousand rupees. <laughs> when you tell them sadhu sadhu, you don't have any money. They chase you off the cart. <laughs> So yeah, so it was fun. I remember the first year they pushed me, they were pushing me up to Subhadra and they were trying to get me to embrace Subhadra. And I thought, Mataji, you know, I can't do that. <laughs> so I, what I did is I, I used my, some of my acrobatic skills <laughs> and I dove, dove straight down and stayed at her feet and I just stayed right by her feet and then, then they didn't do anything. <laughs> so I just took shelter, Subhadra's. 
Then the second year, I, they, they put, I was on Balaram's car. They wouldn't let me go on Jagannath's car <laughs> the second year. But that first year, the carts are lined up. It, it, it ended about evening time, so the, all day, the next day, darshans. And then about 5 or 6 o'clock in the evening, which is about 24 hours since they arrive, then they begin another ceremony of bringing the deities off the cart into the temple. So I remember we went to one house. And we somehow got we got to know some of the people, so they let us use their house. We went way up high so we could see it. Because if you're on the ground, you can't see the whole thing. There's so many people there. So we were up high. And I remember we were sitting on a wall with our feet hanging off the wall. And there were so many mosquitoes biting our feet. <laughs> you been there? <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, were, we, were, I, we had all this mosquito repellent. We were putting it all over our feet, but it wasn't doing any good. These mosquitoes were saying, you know, you know, we're real mosquitoes, not like these other guys. You know. <laughs> So they were chewing on our feet, and we but still we didn't leave because you don't get a chance to see anything like this. It's just so wonderful to watch. And then uh, the deities, after there's more ceremonies, more dignitaries come up, and then people, then more worship programs, and then they take the deities off the cart, and first goes Baladev. So when they're taking him off the cart, of course they put this big headdress on him. It's huge. It's a big gigantic headdress. And when he walks, he shakes back and forth like this. He's like this. He's going back and forth. And this thing on his head is shaking. And so we asked him, well, you know, how do you do that? We asked the, some of the pundits. They said, we don't do it. He's shaking. We're just trying to hold him. Because yeah, Baladev is in ecstasy, now he's returning to Vrindavan, so he's exhibiting his mood of ecstasy. And so then Baladev goes into the temple, and then second is Subhadra. But Subhadra, they don't, she doesn't do that. They just carry her in nicely. So we ask, why does Subhadra do that? Because uh, ladies are not supposed to exhibit their ecstasy in public. <laughs> So this Subhadra goes in, and then Jagannath, he goes in, and that's a big, sh he puts on the headdress too. You, you can see it, the big headdress, it's just so huge and beautiful. And as he's shaking, they carry him in. So that ceremony takes about four hours. And during that time, there is, you know, people playing cartels, drums, and various other instruments. And then there's, there's fire twirlers, too. Did you see the fire twirlers? Uh, you didn't see that? They have these long sticks with rags in the end, and they light them on fire, and then they twirl the sticks, and they throw it up, and it spins, and then they catch it. But when there was one girl, she was about 14 or 15, she had the fire stick, and she was rolling on the ground and twirling it at the same time, going, the, you know, rolling side by side, at the same time twirling it over her head. And then she would get up and throw it up, and she'd catch it and throw it this way. And, it, and they, we asked about her. They said, well, you know, she comes from that family where they're trained in this particular way to serve Jagannath by giving him this entertainment. So it was really beautiful to watch. So the fire twirlers, and then they're playing cartels. They're playing, and they're playing on drums, and they play the cartels. To doom, to doom, to doom, to doom, to doom, to do 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 so it, that's the rhythm, you know, it's like that. It's really nice. And they all play together, not like us, you know. <laughs> it's all synchronized and, you know, they're all playing completely, perfectly in time like that. So it's beautiful to watch. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's Rathiyantra and, of course, then return. 
And then I was there with with uh, Radhanath Swami and Sachi Nandana Maharaj. So it was about seven o'clock at night. This was on 2006. So Sachi Nandana Maharaj said, "Let's go for a bath in the in the in the ocean." So we found a little uh, rickshaw, and we said, "Can you take us to the ocean?" So uh, yeah, so you know it was really hot. So we went into the ocean and. I mean, the ocean is the most fiercest waters you ever, you can't really, even if you go up a, past your waist, you could be pulled into it. And many people have lost their lives in that ocean. It's it's the most ferocious ocean anywhere in the world. Yeah. But sometimes you catch it during the day, it's not so bad. When we went at night, it was really ferocious. So I just went in with my dhoti on. I had my, you know, my dhoti. But then again, when I was in, I lost my dhoti. <laughs> the ocean stole my dhoti. So, and I had to make it back to my room. <laughs> so lucky it was dark. <laughs> I made it back. <laughs> so yeah, this is the adventures of Jagannath Puri. And during the day when we're there, you know, sometimes we stay for the whole, and we go swimming in the ocean. The ocean is so nice. Huge, gigantic waves. And, you know, devotees are riding the waves, and you come flying into the shore at full speed, and then you hit the shore, and you're tumbling in the sand, and you're all bruised up. <laughs> it's like really wild. Did you go swimming there in the ocean? Yeah, it's really... Are you a good swimmer? Me, I, I swim like a rock. You know? <laughs> so, you know, I have to be careful. I couldn't go out too far. But some devotees went really out, and they know how to ride the waves. But the waves are really, really powerful there. Whew. Nowhere have I seen ocean waves like that. It's strong and fast. I mean, they come in fast. It's not like one wave comes and then you wait, and they just keep coming, those waves. It's just like... But it's fun, you know. And once you, Lord Chaitanya and his associates used to go every day and bathe in the ocean. That was a regular pastime of the Lord. So they say that ocean is the holiest tirtha anywhere because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and his associates used to bathe there. Right near the Jagannath Temple. So, yeah. So he went again in 2014. And Again, that year was also very hot. That wasn't there wasn't too many outstanding events that year, but 2001 and 2006 was quite amazing. I actually wrote a whole uh, uh, listing of my whole experience in the year 2001. It takes up about 20 pages. It's just really nice. How much what we experienced, and the devotion is so strong there. There was one. Uh, there was one archie going on during the when the deities were stopped, and one uh, one lady she got the ghee lamp. So she put she took the ghee lamp with her hand, and then instead of putting it on her head, she just go. She kept walking around looking, and finally she found who she was looking for, and then she gave that to the people that she was looking for. She wanted to give the blessings to some of some people that she knew, and we we actually saw that she was actually looking to give the blessings. She just put her hands on the ghee lamp, going like. So you know the, the the devotion is the bhakti is so thick there. It's just nice, and the first day, the actual day of the Rathiyatra, there's over a million people there, and then if it goes on for two days, you get about a half a million on the second day. As many people only come for one day, like that. The second day in the year 2001, it was raining so bad that um, after half the people left the second day, we, the devotees, had a chance to get onto the ropes. So we started doing the rope pulling. And I remember trying to pull the ropes, and I was falling. I fell into the mud. I had an orange dhoti, but you couldn't tell the color. It was just completely muddy. I was just a muddy mess. <laughs> but I didn't care. It was just so much fun. 
<laughs> trying to pull Jagannath like that. So they, the police gave us special privileges the second day. Yeah, so yeah, you can, you, you, it's just a beautiful, beautiful experience. To see, just to see Jagannath on his cart, it's just a powerful experience. If you come to my room, I have a beautiful picture that was taken by one devotee of the Rathiyachar cart and the whole area. It's a huge picture. He was a professional photographer. He came with us. And while he was there, uh, he was praying, My dear Lord, please help me get rid of my material attachments. And right after that, he lost his camera. <laughs> Fortunately, we got some of the pictures before he lost them. <laughs> yeah, he, he said that. Yeah, I was praying to Jagannath, and right after that, he took away my camera. <laughs> Be careful what you pray for. <laughs> so, Snan Yatra is the preliminary, getting ready for the Ratha Yatra. And so it's a beautiful ceremony. Have nice kirtans. I have a beautiful video of us performing Snanyatra in Nuvrindavan. If you'd like to see it, and it's really nice. And it's, it's conducted by one very pure devotee of the Lord who lost her body in saving the lives of the devotees. Her name was Ladini. Maybe you heard about Ladini. She... We wrote a book about her life. She's, it was called Legacy of Love. You've seen that book. But um, she was a Jagannath Pujari from practically her whole time. Uh, she took care of Jagannath. Just, that's all she did the whole time she was in New Vrindavan. And she had a special relationship with Jagannath that nobody else had. It's described in the book that she took five-hour darshan of Jagannath one time. She stood in front of Jagannath for five hours. They were having some exchange. I don't know what it was. but <laughs> So, yeah, it's, it's, it's a beautiful story. So I have a, uh, a video of her conducting the, uh, the Snanyatra in New Vrindavan. Like that. I'm just watching. That's all. Okay, these are something, some pastimes of Snanyatra, Ratyatra. Yeah, tell us something about your experience. Don't don't bring a don't bring a camera <laughs> and you won't lose it. <laughs> well, he, I mean, I, you know, he, his whole life was centered around photography, so I guess he was very attached to it. He was good at it too, but he yeah he, he prayed to, for Lord Jagannath to get rid of his attachments and he, not only his camera but he lost all the money he had with him too. So, <laughs> but he was so happy. He was actually happy that it happened. And the Lord gave him a special blessing. Yeah, yeah. Um, there is a statement. I don't know the reference, but I've heard it a few times. And Prabhupada said, Jagannath has come to the Western countries because Lord Christ worshipped Lord Jagannath in Jagannath Puri when he, when he stayed there. Because there is accounts of Christ spending time in Jagannath Puri. And they say that he was also allowed to 
see Jagannath at that time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what Prabhupada said. In order to, in order to give pleasure to the devotees of Lord Jesus Christ, Jagannath has come to the West. Mm -hmm. Interesting. <laughs> the Lord is grateful. <laughs> then you know the story how Malati went into a little shop that sells all different unusual little items in San Francisco. And she was looking, she found this big barrel, and she saw these little figurines inside the barrel. So she picked up the black one, and she put it in her pocket, didn't pay for it. <laughs> she stole them <laughs> out of the shop. And then she brought it, and she, when Prabhupada was sitting at his desk, she put it in front of Prabhupada. As soon as Prabhupada saw this little, about this big, Prabhupada got down from his chair and paid his obeisances on the floor. Everybody's looking. What's Prabhupada doing? His little figurine, a Jagannath. And then uh, Prabhupada got up and he said, Are there other ones there? <laughs> and she said, Oh, there's many. He said, he said, No, different ones. She said, I'll go back. And then she noticed there was a white one and a yellow one. And she also decided not to pay for those either. <laughs> so Jagannath didn't, we didn't buy Jagannath. <laughs> when, you, when you read the, the biography, it doesn't say it like that. It says that she purchased them, but that's not the story. Because <laughs> she told me personally. <laughs> so... Yeah, so Jagannath came, and, and Prabhupada knew this This would be a great way to attract people to Krishna consciousness. Because, you know, Jagannath goes out on the street. It's the only deity that really, I mean, outside of it, India, the only deity that actually goes out in public. We don't usually bring other deities out in public. Sometimes we bring Gornitai, of course. <laughs> But nobody knows much about Gornitai, but Jagannath. Jagannath? More than 2,000 years ago. The temple is more, more than 2,000 years old. I think that there's a history. There's There's a thing called... Vaikuntha on Earth, it's a book, it's about this thick. It's the whole history of Jagannath, the temple, the rituals, the cooking, everything, the history, all the kings, the lives of the kings that, because just like King Prataparudra's father, or yeah, father who was a previous king, um, I can't remember his name, Jagannath Dev, I think his name was, he was a great devotee of Lord Jagannath, really a great devotee. And beautiful prayers that he used to offer to Jagannath. And there's also been wars in that area where uh, because of Lord Jagannath, uh, this, the devotees in Arissa were able to win the wars against the... And that was the only one of the few kingdoms that the Muslims couldn't, couldn't penetrate. Because of because of King Quatra Perudra and his family lineage of the, of kings. So yeah, there's many many wonderful stories. There's one story where actually Baladev and Jagannath actually got on horses and fought in one war against one enemy. It's a really a wonderful story. I don't remember the story. It's about a marriage between two two kingdoms, between one son and one daughter. And that's how the whole idea of sweeping the street in front of Jagannath started, this particular pastime. It's, it has to do with caste difference. And 
interesting story how Baladev and Jagannath actually came out of their temple, became soldiers, and fought on the side yeah. of one king. Interesting. Prabhupada came. I know he came in 1977, but came again. The Prabhupada wouldn't go into the Jagannath temple. Mm. They invited him in. They wanted him to come in, but he wouldn't go. He said, he said, unless you let my devotees in, I'm not coming. He said, Jagannath is not, he's not, uh, he's not, he's not Hindu Nath, he's Jagannath. Prabhupada said, he's not Hindu Nath, he's Jagannath. Jai Panchatat Ki Jai. Because, you know, they unless you are Hindu, you can't get in. So Prabhupada wanted his disciples to go in. He said, if you don't let my disciples in, I'm not coming also. Prabhupada refused to go in. And there's been stories of devotees sneaking in, who weren't supposed to sneak in, and getting caught. <laughs> there's a whole story of Bhakti Tirtha Swami, how he he snuck in because he's black, and he thought they didn't, it looked good. So what happened is he snuck in, and he was there, and they didn't they thought he was a Hindu because he had a thing over his head and he was there for many hours and then he left and he thought I'm going to go back again so that was a mistake the second time when he back, went back they recognized him as not being bona fide so they came after him because if they catch you they beat you up and they take everything you have if you have any money or any jewelry they'll, they'll just take everything off you Yeah, this happened to another devotee too so they ran after Bhakti Tirtha Swami, but he said they couldn't catch me. <laughs> so he got away. Because <laughs> you don't get caught. If you get caught, you're finished. And they, they just beat you up. <laughs> I mean, really beat you up. So, yeah. So you don't want to have, you don't want, you want to avoid it. And the police don't say anything because, they, you know, they go along with whatever the, the the priests in the temple do. <laughs> and so you can't mess around. Well, but, you know, there's been so many controversies trying to break through that. But Prabhupada said at one time it will change. But he didn't give any indication. There was one lady, she was a super rich lady from Sweden. She gave thousands and thousands and thousands of, I don't know, euros or pounds to Lord Jagannath. Big fortune. But because she was Swedish, they didn't let her in. <laughs> although she gave such a huge donation, they still wouldn't let her in. <laughs> They're very strict on that. Super strict. But we made friends with some of the pandas because of Radhana Swami, he, know, he knew some of them. So we were getting Maha Prashadam from Jagannath. Not just, you know, they say, you know, because people can get Jagannath Maha, but what they get is what is offered on the side. We were getting it from his plate, right from Jagannath's plate. Whoa. And you, when you eat Jagannath Prashadam, you don't stop. You just keep eating, and every time, you, every bite you take, it gets better. It never, it never decreases. So you could just eat and eat and eat. I remember we were just eating and eating and laughing and having a good time and eating more and eating more and everything is so so nicely prepared and so unique. The tastes are un unlike any. Did you get any maha there when when you were there? Yeah. 
Oh, man, it's like any nothing else you've ever tasted anywhere in the world. So we got special mercy from these two pundas. One was, what was his name? Ra Rajkumar, I think his name was. Rajkumar and his brother, they were brothers. They liked us. The rest of the pandas didn't like us because <laughs> we were, we had our skin was pale, you know. <laughs> but they liked us. I remember even being harassed by some of the pandas. They were the young pandas were saying, you know, the, you guys can't come in, you know, <laughs> you can't see Jagannath. We're saying we're seeing him now, because <laughs> when he comes out once a year, we see him like that. But Lord Chaitanya respected that tradition, so therefore when Rupa and Sanatana Goswami, because they had given up their caste and took service from Muslims, they weren't allowed to go in Jagannath Temple. And uh, also Srila Haridas Thakur, he was born in a Muslim family. But Lord Chaitanya came personally and would bring pr Jagannath Prashadam to Srila Haridas Thakur and to Rupa and Sanatan Goswami. And he told them, he said, you may not be able to see Jagannath, but you can see Jagannath by seeing the flag on the top of the temple. They say, the chakra, there's a chakra on the very top of the temple. They say if you take darshan of that, it's like seeing the Lord directly. So maybe someday you can organize a yatra from here and all the devotees can go during the Ratha Yatra time. You know, just stay for uh, like a week. Or even if Radha Swami, he does his yatras every once in a while, maybe a big one. The last one was in 2014. Maybe he'll do another one. You can always connect to those 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 uh, yatras and go with the devotees. Then you get good care, and then, then it's a whole program. Mm -hmm. Hare Krishna. How was the Rieka? Rieka of Ratha Yatra? That was nice. And Kadambakana Maharaj led one hour kirtan prior to the to the actual carp pulling. And Jagannath wasn't even there. He was still coming. And Maharaj led for about an hour. I was ecstatic kirtan. And then as soon as the carts started, then Mahavishnu Swami led. And then after that, Puladananda Maharaj led. And then some little guy snuck in there and led for about 10 minutes. And then after that, there was uh, Ajashwi led. Then Ajashwi was leading. And uh, I said to, I mean, he was leading for a while. I said uh, to Kadamba Kanamars, I said, do you want to lead? He didn't say anything. And then I could indicate, I could understand he wanted to lead. So... Uh, he said, no, let, it, let him finish. I said, oh, Joshua, he can go on for two days. So either we stop him or he'll go on to, you know, <laughs> for the next two days. So we very nicely asked him to give his rest of the time to Kandama Mara, Kandana Kanamara, and he led the, the rest of the Ratha Yatra. You were there, right? Yeah. And at the end, it was pretty crazy, right? We were completely nuts. Oh, you left before the end, right? Yeah, we were just nuts. We were going, it was completely nuts. The movie, yeah. Uh, <laughs> it was worse than the movie. <laughs> <laughs> and, we could, you know, we, as soon as the Didi stopped, when there's another a whole new kirtan started. And then Vish, Mahavishnu Swami led the Sringa Arati. I was going to lead, so I thought, nah, I'll just ask Maharaj to lead. So I asked him, he said, he started leading. And then, when he finished the Sringa Arati, he just kept leading Kirtan after that. And I was thinking, boy, what about lunch? You know? <laughs> so we took lunch at about 3.30 that afternoon. 
That was nice. It was a nice experience. I, I noticed one thing that I had, because I'm there every year. This year, everyone was happy. Sometimes you see some long faces and people, you know, just for whatever reason. But this year, everybody seemed to be happy. It was just like a really nice experience this year. It was just, the energy was really up. So it was sweet. Did you go? Rathiatra? Did you go to Rathiatra? No. You did? You were there? Rieka? Did you go to the Rieka Rathiatra? Yeah, you were there. Okay. That's right, you were there. I remember now. There's a question on the internet. Internet. Yes. For Odutarai Prabhu, thanks for a nice lecture. Could you tell something more about the benefits of participating in Ratha Yatra? <laughs> yeah, you can go back to Godhead. <laughs> it's it's the benefits are unlimited. Jagannath will benefit you just as much as he wants to benefit you. But they say if there was one lady in the 2001 Rathiyatra, she wanted to jump in front of the cart. You know, because if you jump in front of the cart and you get run over by the cart, you go back to Godhead. Yeah, that's what it says. So she tried to do that, but the, the police stopped her. I saw it, and she was going she was serious. <laughs> and so, yeah, there's a lot of benefit in we can't calculate how much benefit it is, but simply by seeing the Lord, you know, performing His pastime, it's a very intimate pastime of the Lord feeling separation from His devotee and returning to Vrindavan. Yeah, so there's the benefits are immensely. If you read the Skanda Purana, the Skanda Purana gives you all the details of Rathayatra. And, and then, then Rathayatra is mentioned in a couple of Puranas, but especially in Skanda Puranas, it's a, really a detailed description of Rathayatra and Jagannath Puri, so many like that. Okay, so the garland makers are eternally engaged. It never ends. Okay, good. So many garlands. All right. Hare Krishna. Jai Jagannath. Jai Baladev. Jai Subhadra. Jai 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 Shila Prabhupada. Jai Panchatatva. Jai all of you. <laughs> Ki Jai. <laughs> jai. Jai Jagannath.